number one demographic of people that are on Medicaid and welfare are white people that are in the South and in Appalachia. But neither side thinks about that. Like, if you're a, a conservative, you think, no, uh, what the news people tell me is that there's a race divide and, and there's welfare queens and people taking advantage of this. They don't realize it's actually the voters who voted for your side that right. most utilize the social safety net. If you appreciated that, you'd probably care a little bit differently about the social safety net, right? But they don't because it's probably a more of a race issue than it is a pragmatic issue. And the progressive side, I notice, has the same kind of common mistake where they think all white people are rich, privileged, taking advantage of, of others, um, prosecuting, persecuting, and, and just general mindlessness, which obviously both sides are deeply ignorant of. Well, I think anytime you say all, you're, probably you're automatically wrong. wrong. Yeah, that's really true. Yeah. I, it's, <laughs> this is a tough question. Man, I mean, it's, You're so scared but, to no, step on the thing. toes. No, but here's the thing. No, but what I, what I was going to say, though, is I think... I, I've said this before. I think I said it in the last podcast. I I am very much against the idea or the concept that there are things that we can't question, yeah, or that we can't ridicule. Right. In my mind, nothing, no idea or belief is above ridicule. Right. Like we can disagree on something, and I can be respectful to the person, but I don't have to be respectful to somebody's beliefs. Right. I don't think that's necessary. I think ridicule is very valuable. It's that's how I have really come to believe and and know certain things is because I've said some stupid shit right. <laughs> and I've gotten ridiculed for it. Yeah. And then that that gives me pause. Yeah. <laughs> when I think like, oh, you know what? I just said something I can't defend. Maybe I should think more about that. Right. Or either come up with a better defense for what I think or what I believe. Or abandon what I think or what I believe because I can't defend it. Yeah, I agree with that. So, but now here's a whole different thing. In society, that's great and wonderful. At the university, you're fighting against somebody who gives you a grade at the end. Yeah, this is weird. And that there's a there's a power dynamic there yeah. that's that factors in. So, I mean, my advice, I I would love to say, you know, well. This is this is a, a university. This is supposed to be a place for free thought and and challenging free mm -hmm. thought. Yeah. And if you disagree with that, you should be able to express your concern and your disagreement. You should be able to do that freely. Yeah. That's that's um, the freedom of speech. You know, you exercise that right. Yeah. Um, but my grade isn't dependent on it. <laughs> I agree. And, and I'll, I'll actually come alongside this too. So as a student, I think you can feel powerless. And I think you can be scared of your professor. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and email this episode to your professor. And I'm going to go ahead and speak to her right now. Hey there. How you doing? It's me, Jim. You don't know me. But here's the deal. The criticism that you're pulling out of history against white men is not because you don't like the color white and the gender of male. It's because you don't like the philosophical approach that a group of people gets to subjugate and gets to uh, judge other groups of people based on not the content of their character, but where they were born, the color of their skin, and some kind of divine right to being better than them. If you come out of the gate and lecture your students about how all white males everywhere are bad because of the historical institutions that they created... You are exactly the problem that you are criticizing. Like Martin Luther King Jr. did not join forces with the Black Panther movement because he believed that their, their reaction was an overreaction and it was starting to smell of the same principles that he had a problem with in the beginning. He wanted people judged on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. And there was points uh, whenever they, they questioned Martin Luther King on this. And he said, I refuse to hate white people. I don't hate white people. I hate people individually. <laughs> like I will get to know you and decide if you're worthy of my hate. But he said, hate is too great a burden to bear. I choose love. And so I, I believe that this is a reckless kind of mentality. You're causing harm to your student, and that's not your goal. As an educator, your goal is to empower your students, to help them have a broader view of reality. Yes, I think you should bring a social criticism, but I also think that this is going beyond the pale. You're making somebody feel unsafe, and that is you leveraging your power to and your privilege as the as the head of that class to be dominant of somebody who has none and those are exactly the things that you are protesting and exactly the things you don't like so in this unique dynamic 
I think that the professor is wrong and I think the professor needs to change their ways. Now, if you are a listener and you are sharpening your pencils and you are saying, man, I just realized that I looked at the picture of pod therapy and you guys are Caucasian men and I have a problem with this, you know, and I think that you guys do not see the Me Too movement. You don't understand the culture. Okay, hold on. We give our advice directly to the writer and specifically considering the writer's concepts and their predicament. That context alone. We're not making a criticism of the greater movement that Me Too needs to check itself or that, you know, everybody needs to dial this back a notch and that maybe, you know, Sean Hannity's got a point. No, we didn't say any of that. (laughs) So please don't put us in that box. That is not the case. But wrap up thoughts on that, Nick? This is a very unique question. It is dynamic. Um, Yeah, I I, I think you, you, you raise some good points, but you are a white male, so... So you have to distrust me? <laughs> so I'm probably wrong? I don't know. We'll yeah, that's, that's probably fair. But uh, you know what, guys? Honestly, if you are participating in this counter-movement, I, I I laud you. I'm with you. And I, you know, have my own voice that I use on Twitter and I use in, in certain dynamics. I believe that there needs to be a social reaction. However, I find that the best version of us is when we are listening and when we are always seeing people as individuals. I want to see people as human. Right. I, I always take the approach of being uh, thoughtful and critical, mm-hmm. regardless of the platform. You know, say, for ex- example, you know, anything that, um, you know, when I'm on Facebook. So I wasn't on Facebook for a long time because yeah. I took it off my phone. Yeah. Um, it wasn't something that I was, like, making a statement against. I just, it was, it I, I took it off my phone, so I didn't have access. So it was almost uh, probably three weeks. I was completely off Facebook. And I just recently, this past weekend, went back on Facebook. And I discovered all of the same people are posting. And they're all posting the exact same thing. Right. It's like I never left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I know that, like, there, I, I've got friends that are very conservative. Mm-hmm. And the stuff that they post, mm-hmm. um, I'm very critical of a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to you know read into this a little bit more and mm-hmm. understand like okay where are you getting this information right you know. is this accurate or is this been filtered or distorted in some way mm-hmm. but guess what i do the same thing for a lot of my liberal friends too yeah yeah i'm i'm critical about everything i right. don't i don't want to just hear somebody's opinion about stuff i i want to know like how did you arrive at that opinion yes. what are you looking at like critical thinking is very important so even if I am a huge supporter of the Me Too movement. I can really be supportive of that, but that doesn't mean that I automatically agree with everything that's Me Too and disagree with everything that's not. Right. Or, um, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter thing yes. or all of these movements. I, I'm a big fan of critical thinking regardless of the stance right. or regardless of whether or not this person's on my side. Just because they are on my side or on my quote-unquote team. right. That doesn't mean that they get a free pass, right? For just because they, they voted say. like you in the last right. election, that doesn't mean you're just going to swallow all of their their thoughts and right. not ever take a look at them. No, I completely agree. And and listen, if you're out there and, and you're on either side of the line, we're not a political show, um, but I think that the psychology of how we treat humans is very important, even when we're protesting, even when we're trying to correct social ills or address really important problems. This is good, and you should do that, but. Try to make that loud, screaming voice of yours still a human one. And and try not to broadly lump everybody together. This professor is wrong. And I would hope that if you find yourself doing that same thing, whether that's online or at your work or in your group of friends, um, I would hope that you would take a second to self-examine and ask yourself, am I making humans feel unsafe? Is that my goal? I mean, mm-hmm. just because they're white men... Do, do they all represent an institution that I don't like? Is that possible for all humans of a certain visual appearance to represent ideas? Is that even possible? Like, I don't think you believe that. And I think that you should look <laughs> at people individually while you're still trying to call for change in institution. You can't even get all people to agree on statements like pizza is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't even get all five dentists to agree that Trident is good. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting these guys all on the same page. Probably not going to happen. But uh, to the writer, you know, uh, the best advice I have is just to honestly uh, duck and cover and get through and get your grade. But I, I also think don't be afraid to send this podcast over or to bring up the conversation and say, you know, talk to yeah. them privately. Don't embarrass them in front of their students. Um, but, you know, talk them privately and say, you know, hi, my name is this. 
th- I'm from this place. Yeah. Okay. And one. Please don't group me in with everybody you hate. One last piece of advice that I would I, I would give you because I just thought about this is you have the opportunity right now to be proof of the opposite of yeah, what she said. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah that's why I always, um, as as an atheist, I don't come out and say, "Hey, I'm an atheist," and right. I, you know, yeah. I, you know, I get to get to know people and I talk pe- talk to people, and then when it comes up, if it ever comes up. And I have the opportunity, and they're asking me about my you religious share the beliefs. Gospel of atheism. Then <laughs> there's no gospel. Um, then I, yeah, then I, I, I like being able to say, well, I, I don't, I don't believe in God. I'm, right. I'm an atheist, because then it puts people in a situation at, if they're uh, religious. They don't get to lump you into anything, right? They yeah, actually because know it, you. It, yeah. yeah, because it puts them in that situation, like, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. I like him. Mm-hmm. He's very likable, and he doesn't eat babies. Yeah, and he doesn't like. To, right, you know, he doesn't worship the devil, and he's a, like, wow, he's he's a really good person. Yeah, and so you have the opportunity to to be that image for this person. That's so true, Nick. And you know what? My final thought on the subject, because again, I think this question is so good because it is is a big question globally. It's a question of culture. And I think every listener can resonate with some of this. Maybe you haven't been picked on. Maybe you haven't picked on others, but you've watched this very boisterous conversation happening. And I'll tell you this. As a therapist, I've noticed the same thing in in, uh, my work. I intentionally registered as nonpartisan and part of that was because I had the opportunity to do something for the government, like helping in, in a way about mental health. And I felt like I owed it to uh, both sides to be nonpartisan because I was supposed to not be partisan. I was supposed to just be a helper. So I did that with intention. But I also noticed I wanted to put myself in a position where I could never not help somebody, right? Mm. And I, I never wanted to experience a patient who might have very strong views one way or the other and find that I'm incapable of helping them because of my beliefs, my prejudices, and my incompatibility. And and I've had people come to work on depression or work on drinking, and then they will um, start making some dog whistle statements or or make statements that I know is part of propaganda from a a very specific political view. And I do not even try to notice them because Mm -hmm. I recognize I'm, I'm here to help with this problem, right? this other thing that you came in here for your life's falling apart. Let me work on that. And what I've noticed is I've had, I had one patient who I've been working with for months and has made lots of comments about uh, political conservatism. And I just kind of smile and nod and, and then continue the conversation. And the other day, this person brought it up and asked me, Hey, do you mind if I ask you about your politics? And I was, you know, as a therapist, like, well, I don't know that it's helpful, you know, so right. I, I don't <laughs> feel like that's necessary. But in, in they asked, well, OK, in, in, in the realm of psychology, though, I'm going to tell you about something that I experienced because of political conservatism. Can we talk about that? And we talked about the anger. And he was experiencing a lot of anger because of his, his views and listening to Rush Limbaugh and re- listening to Sean Hannity. And there's always this outrage. And he said, sometimes right. it's really exhausting. And we, we talked about how that political outrage really saps at the joy of life and the, the sense that humans are inherently good and worth knowing and that you are not powerless in the world and that it doesn't take violence or rage to solicit change. And so I think anybody listening to this can resonate with some of this, whether you're politically conservative or politically liberal. Um, always remember to treat others with common human decency and not to lump them all as one thing. Absolutely. I, uh, that's a great note to end on. We should hurry up and get off of this topic before we say something that's going <laughs> well, to get us in trouble. it's a good time to move to the apology segment. <laughs> All right. Great segue. Yeah. So uh, uh, I have a few apologies this week. Of course you do. Uh, nothing that I have to apologize for that I did on this show, but things I should apologize for, which I did on Twitter. Uh, I owe an apology to Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao uh, for tweeting that their next fight will be hosted at a senior living home. Uh, and at 4 p.m. before it, the early bird special. That tweet was unnecessary, but not unfair. Yeah, not unfair. I'm very <laughs> proud of it. Uh, but I apologize. also apologize to the Oakland Raiders for continuing to harp on their horrible, horrible playing and that they traded Khalil Mack for a whole bunch of nothing. And uh, also Budweiser. Uh, Budweiser um, filled up a bunch of cans uh, with water and sent it to the Hurricane Florence uh, zone. Oh, I didn't people. hear about that. Yeah, and uh, I tweeted... They, the headline was Budweiser fills up cans with water 
and ships uh, water to Florence victims, and I I wrote so basically Budweiser then. <laughs> it's not <laughs> that's just their beer, right? <laughs>